Aging and disease are biochemical processes that happen over many decades. And if we track and optimize well-established biomarkers of organ and systemic health, can aging and disease risk be slowed? Apologies if you've heard that a million times, but that's the central premise of the channel. So with that in mind, earlier this week, I blood tested for the fifth time in 2023. So what's my biological age? And that's what we can see here. And this is using Dr. Morgan Levine's phenotypic age calculator as a metric of biological age. And if you want to measure your own biological age using the, the Levine test, there'll be a link in the video's description. All right, so when entering the data for the nine biomarkers and chronological age, I get a biological age of 38.9 years, which is 11.7 years younger than my chronological. Now, 11.7 years superficially may seem great, but this is five years worse than my recent trend of 16 years younger for many tests. So we'll take a deeper look why that could be uh, just in a minute. Now, note that for the 12th consecutive test, and this is good news, Quest high sensitivity C-reactive protein measurement was less than 0.3 milligrams per liter. So at most, CRP could be 0.3, but also it could be lower. It can't be higher than 0.3. That's their limit of detection. So some good news within the context of a five-year older biological age. And if you're interested in all of the blood test data, screenshots of that will be later in the video. Now, this is just one test. For more context, let's, ha let's have a look at biological age results since 2018, as I have 27 blood tests uh, over that period. And that's what we can see here. So from 2018 to 2019, I only have three data points with an average biological age using the, the, the Levine test of 36.1 years. And then over 12 tests from 2020 to 2021, average age was 35.6. Seven tests in 2022, I significantly reduced it to 33.8 years. And if you missed any of these videos, uh, some will be in the right corner, but I have playlists for 2022 and 2021 data. So if you're interested in that, check it out. And then thus far in 2023, the average biological age using the Levine test is 34.7, even when including this 38.9. But what I'd like to highlight is take a look at how far away it is from the rest of the data. It's an outlier, or it looks like an outlier. In fact, I haven't had data this bad going back only to 2020. I've only had two data points uh, that have been as bad, or one data point that's been as bad as this most recent test, which raises the question, is this an outlier or an early indication of a, a chronic problem? And there's no way to know for now. All, all that I can continue to do is test to get on top of it if it is a chronic problem. But it's possible also that this is just an outlier and the other tests will go back to my 16-year or, or better uh, average. All right, so what got significantly worse? I could focus on creatinine and glucose, which went in the wrong direction. But what I'd like to focus on is the percentage of lymphocytes. Other, in other words, how many lymphocytes, uh, lymphocytes divided by total white blood cells. That's the lymphocyte percentage. So the lymphocyte percentage declines during aging, and that's what we can see here with the percentage on the y-axis plotted against chronological age from the 20 to 90 year range on the x. And first, starting with the data from M, we can see a clear uh, decline for the lymphocyte percentage from about 28% to about 18% in advanced age. And similarly for women, although there's a biphasic response likely mediated by childbirth and or menopause, we can see that uh, young women have values around 27% that declined to about 22% in advanced age. All right, so what's my data? I have 46 blood tests that go back to 2003 for the percentage of lymphocytes, and that's what we can see here. So from 2003 to 2008, I wasn't testing very often, but I do have three data points with an average lymphocyte percentage of about 41%. And then I started testing more often in starting in 2015. And we can see that over 43 tests from 2015 to 2023, not about nine years, that's about five tests per year. Average lymphocyte percentage, about 42%, 41.6%. So when using a two sample t-test, there's no difference for these two groups of data. Although three data points may not be enough for a real comparison, nonetheless, we don't see an age-related decline for the lymphocyte percentage in my data. But note that most recent data point of 25.7, far away from all of the other data. So that again raises the question, is it an outlier or a potential indicator of a chronic problem or a potential chronic problem? In addition, why did it happen? So what was mostly different for this test, and we'll take a deeper dive into this in the next video uh, in terms of diet changes, test over test. But uh, in terms of supplements, that's also a possibility. For example, I increased my tryptophan intake to two grams per day, 
which is basically 300% uh, higher than my baseline intake. My baseline intake is one gram per day with two grams of tryptophan. Now we're up to three grams per day. Uh, so did that mess up my immune system biomarkers? Maybe, maybe it messed up my gut. Maybe it messed up my immune system. I don't know for sure, but I've taken it out of the approach for now, even without knowing what it did, if anything, to my NAD levels as I wait for those results to come in. Now, the biological age using Levine's test, I don't only track it using that metric. I also use aging.ai. So when entering its 19 component biomarkers, as shown there, and this is using the North American data set, so if anyone wants to double check the numbers, I get a predicted age of 33 years, which is 17.6 years younger than my chronological. So not bad, but I've got it in red because it's not as, as good as my best data for aging.ai over the past few years. So that too raises the question, what got worse test over test? So I could focus on glucose, blood urine nitrogen, or bun, and creatinine, which went in the wrong direction in terms of age-related changes, but probably the most dramatic change are platelets, which went below 200. So let's take a deeper look at that. Platelets decline during aging, and that's what we can see here. And this is data for men. I've covered data for women in an earlier video. So if you missed that, if you just do a search for platelets on the channel, you should be able to find it. So here we can see that within the 20 to 100 year age range, we can see that platelets decline from about 231 to 209. And the importance of that age-related decline as platelets move towards 200 or even potentially below is that less than 200, but also greater than 300 for platelets is associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. And that's what we can see here. So when 200 to 300 was the referent, we can see that having platelets higher than 300, 300 to less than 400, but also greater than 400, was associated with a significantly increased all-cause mortality risk. We can see that data in parentheses is completely above one, so it's a significant association. Similarly, when platelets are less than 200, we can see an 8% increased risk, and then if they're less than 100, it's an even higher risk, 93% increased risk for all-cause mortality. So having platelets at 179 is definitely in the wrong direction. It's aged, and it will put me at a higher risk for all-cause mortality if that was the case going forward for every test. So with that in mind, what's my data? And that's what we can see here for platelets. This is 49 blood tests that go back to 2008. Unfortunately, I don't have data for platelets before 2008 in contrast with the lymphocyte percentage data where I have data that goes back to 2003. So from 2008 to 2013, average platelets were 210, and that's over six tests. And then after testing more often, starting in 2015, over 43 tests, we can see that average platelets were 229. So basically reversing uh, that age-related uh, change. So going from 210, going higher to 229. And that's what we can see there. So, and that's that these differences between groups using a two-sample t-test is significantly different as indicated by that p-value of 0.04. Now, for the most recent data point, we can see that that's there. I have had a few data points for platelets that have been that low in the past, but very rarely, as you can see. And in terms of that age-related decline, maybe that's not exactly true, because if we look back to a few tests, we can see that there is a bit of a trend going towards lower platelets. So the goal for the next test is to identify correlations with platelets in my data with diet, starting with that, and I'll see what I can potentially do to get it above 200. That's the goal. Now, just like we did for Levine's test, this is only one test for aging.ai. For more context, let's have a look at previous data, which is what we can see here, as I have 42 blood tests that go back to 2009 that can be used to compute aging.ai age. So from 2008 to 2013, over three tests, average aging.ai age was 32 years. And then after testing more often from 2016 to 2022, 34 tests, average age 29.8 years. And thus far in 2023, even with that most recent 33 years, my average so far in 2023, 2023 this year is 30, 30 sorry, hard to say, 30.4 years. So even with this bit of a recent uh, higher, higher than I'd like data, 2023 is still not too far from where I've been over the past uh, 15 years or so. So my aging.ai is still consistently within that 30 to 32 year age range, at least my average data since 2008. So what was different for this test besides tryptophan in terms of diet and or supplements? And I'll cover that in a video coming soon. But for now, what I'd like to do is take a deeper dive into the blood test report, which is shown here. So first, what I'd like to highlight are red blood cells, which are used in the Levine test as a metric for biological age. Now, superficially, 5.3 may be okay if we just use the reference range. You can see it's within that range of 3.8 to 10.8. 
But as I've mentioned in earlier videos, the reference range is not what's optimal for health and potentially longevity. And I covered this in an earlier video where the white blood cell optimal range is probably 3.5 to 6. And if you missed that video, it'll be right there in the right corner. But even there, going deeper, what I'd like to focus on are neutrophils and lymphocytes as the major cell types that are found within white blood cell counts. So even though 5.3 is within that optimal range of 3.5 to 6, neutrophils and lymphocytes went in the wrong direction for this test. And that's because what's optimal for neutrophils are in the 2,000 to 3,000 range. So we can see my 3578, although within that reference range, is not within that quote-unquote optimal range in terms of at least reduced all-cause mortality risk. Similarly, for lymphocytes, somewhere around 2,000 may be optimal. And again, that data is in the video in the right corner. And even though my 1362 is within the reference range, again, which I think goes up to 3,900 here, 850 to 3,900, it's, it's going in the wrong direction as they decline during aging. So just focusing on that total white blood cell count may be misleading. It's, I think it's more instructive and informative to look at levels of neutrophils, lymphocytes, and even monocytes, which comprise probably about 95% to 95 or more of the total white blood cell counts. All right, page two of the blood test report, lipid panel, CRP, and glucose. And this blood test raises some questions, including did high dose serine, six grams per day, my highest intake yet, and vitamin B6 supplementation, eight-fold higher than my baseline, reduce homocysteine. So I haven't hom shown homocysteine data uh, in this video, and I do have that data, so stay tuned for that in a future video. Also, did I make progress for increasing DHEA sulfate? And did tryptophan, two grams per day, impact NAD? As I expected, it would increase NAD through the de novo NAD synthesis pathway, and I don't yet have those results, so stay tuned for that too in a future video. And also, were epigenetic and telomere data worse as I sent blood for analysis also on the day of this blood test on uh, August 21st? So stay tuned for all these videos coming soon. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, NAD quantification, epigenetic and telomere testing, oral microbiome composition, green tea, at-home blood testing with SciFox Health. Note that their panel is mostly different from the metabolomics data as it includes ApoB, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, that link and all the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.